Well, hello there. I am Mark Johnston and I do STEM education videos. And today I'm going to do part two of the VEX VR Shape Tracer. If you haven't seen the first video, check the description down below. In today's video specifically, we'll be covering polygons, the three polygons in the middle of the Shape Tracer playground. So let's get into it. All right, here we are on the Shape Tracer playground. If I select location D, we have this uh, pentagon here, and I'll go ahead and click play, and you can see that it will go ahead and do the pentagon. Now, the exact same program can allow me to select E for this hexagon, and I'll click play, and there we go. Now. I teased at the end of the first video that I would talk about how I did this. And so I will tell you how I did this in um, this video. Uh, and I don't think it's that it's going to be that exciting, but for all that lead up, but I, uh, I, I still want to tell you right now that I will show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the octagon. You can see here that I spent quite a bit of time trying to make sure that it was exactly right. Uh, you can see that there is a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of it not getting quite in, quite on the pink line, but I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close. I would say that might be as good as it can get. All right, well, let's go ahead and get into looking at uh, the code. So the important thing to remember is that all of these have the same length all their sides are the same length, okay? Um, so the pentagon has five sides of, of equal lengths. And so the first thing I could do is just simply know that, uh, you know, 360, and I could even just do some math real quick, 360 divided by five is 72, okay? So I know that I need my robot to drive forward for a particular amount. Uh, for that pentagon, I think I started with about 300. And, okay, so I need to change my location here uh, to D. And then I do need to drop the pen down. And I am actually a little bit impatient, so I'm going to go ahead and set my drive and turn velocities right now to 100%. It's important to note that you cannot go more than 100%. So some sometimes kids will want to put in... 2000%, it'll just do 100%. All right, so now I need to go to the looks area and grab that pen tool and then drop that robot pen down. And it really doesn't matter where I put it as long as I put it at the top because I'm going to be doing that the whole way. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and make it drive forward and then reverse. It's just to get that robot out of the way so that I can see what it's doing. And it looks like I'm a, just shy, almost about two of those blocks. You can see it goes a little past. And those blocks, I, I learned in the last video, those are 20 each. So I'm going to say 340. So 340. All right, so that's 340, definitely. So now I need to drive, I need to turn 72 degrees. So I will go here and take drivetrain and say turn right 72 degrees and then I can duplicate that and then I can duplicate that <laughs> and then I can what, duplicate from there all right so I'll have drive forward turn 72 and it'll do it five times of course uh, anytime we're going to do something over and over and over again we want to make use of those control structures that we have uh, where we can do a repeat. And so I think we did a repeat on the triangle. I'm not sure. I, I think we did that. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do it again. So I'm going to get rid of everything. I only need that one drive forward and turn. So I'll go to the control structures here. I'll grab a repeat. Notice I can get it to wrap right around that. 
and then I'll have it repeat five times. Reset and go. And that should do it. Now, I'm going to take it up a notch here and I'm gonna go ahead and set it so that it does the math for me. Um, I could just do the math each time and say, okay, you know, if I wanted to do six sided and then I need to just change the 72 degrees to 360 divided by six. Well, maybe I want it to, maybe I want to feed it whatever number I want and I want it to uh, figure out the calculation of the angle for me. So I can do that. Um, what I'll do is I'll take the division and I'll put division there and then I'll say six divided by 360. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> 360 divided by six. Uh, that would have been interesting. All right, and then let's try this one. Now I'm pretty sure that those are not 340. So if I switch to E, it's gonna draw a much bigger uh, hexagon, but let's just see for illustrative purposes. Okay, we should get a hexagon, yep. All right, very cool. Um, so it looks like it's probably about 40 short. So I'm thinking it's about 300. Ooh, so close. I think it's like 290. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a function. In blocks, we call it a my block. Okay, because that's really what a uh, these blocks are. These blocks are all just different functions. And so we're going to make our own function or in the case of blocks, we're gonna make our own block. And it's called a my block. All right, so we got this bang on right there. We're good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and before I do the octagon, I'm gonna make, do a my block. You'll notice there's a category for it right here. It's that pink category if I click my block and I'm gonna click make block. Now I know I need two pieces of information for my polygon. I need to know the number of sides and then I also need to know the length of each of those sides. So the way that these my blocks work is you have a name and that's the, the thing that's gonna appear first in the block. So I'm gonna call it poly and then I'm just gonna do a space and then I'm gonna put number of sides, and then I'll do a, a colon like that just to make it look nice. And then I'm gonna click add an input. Now this input, I'm gonna call it num sides, but you can call it whatever you want pretty much. Uh, next thing I want is I do want another input, but you notice if I go like, if I put another input right there, uh, I don't have a way to specify what it is. So I'm gonna click the little trash can icon and I'm gonna add a text label first. So number of sides, and then I need to know length of side, of sides, that's fine. Length of sides, and then a semicolon, and then an input, right? And then I'm just gonna call it len, okay? I like to abbreviate just to make it short, like we got num sides here, len is just short for length, okay? I'll click okay. Now I get this other uh, hat block. Okay, this hat block up here when started, it's a hat block because there's nothing, it, you can't attach to the top, it goes right on the top. And I have another hat block here now that is define this guy right here. The, notice that block, outline of that block is there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this repeat here and pull it up there. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm trying, I'm saying what poly does. I'm defining what poly does. So let's go down here to my blocks. And now instead of just make a block, I have the poly num sides, length sides. Now, I'm not doing anything with those numbers right now. I just want to illustrate real quick that if I use this the way it is, the numbers, the num sides one and the length sides one don't do anything right now. They don't do anything yet. Okay, but it will still take poly num sides and jump over here and then run what's underneath of there, okay? 
So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. So I'll reset and play. And sure enough, it's going to run that. Now, um, that does us some good if, for instance, we wanted to, I don't know, um, let's say we wanted to drive uh, into another location and draw another polygon. We could go down here and draw another hexagon, for instance. And the nice thing about that is now, instead of having to duplicate that same exact code multiple times in my code stack here, I can just, I can just have it run it again. And so I could do that and it would make my uh, stack of code a lot smaller, okay? But I do wanna use this information. Um, these are uh, parameters that I'm passing into the, uh, the, the, the hat block over here. Okay, so if I said I wanted a six-sided, let's go back to five, right? Five-sided block or a five-sided polygon, and I want each of those sides to be 340 in length. Okay, so then up here, I know that I, I, th I need to repeat for the same amount of the number of sides that I have. So I'm gonna drag this little num sides, and you can use this anywhere inside of where you're defining. You can't put it over here. Well, you're not supposed to be able to put it over there. Yeah, see how it turns gray like that? Okay, that's because it's outside of its scope. It's outside of, uh, it's not a global variable. It's just a variable inside this, um, this function. Okay, so I'm gonna drag that there in num side. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna come down here to this code. It's gonna carry that five over here and pass it from there into here. So it's gonna do it six times, or five times in this case, excuse me. So I also need to take and divide 360 by the number of sides. And then of course my length, I'm gonna get from this little LEN guy right here and put it right there. All right, so that now I have, and I could just put that off to the side, right? Now I have my own block that anytime I wanna draw a polygon, I can just tell it how many sides it has and how, what the length of those sides are, and it will draw an enclosed polygon with equal length sides, all right? So just like that, pretty cool, right? So let's say I wanted that one. Now let's say, uh, let's change it to six, and then what was it, 290, I think? All right, now if I go and change the location to this one, I can push play, and there we go, just like that. All right, that's pretty much all there is to it. Let's let's do the octagon now. Okay, I want to do eight sides, and I don't remember the the octagon. It's definitely less than two ninety. I'm thinking it's probably like two sixty. Anyway, okay, two thirty five. I'm gonna say it's probably two thirty five. Let's see. I can't I can't let it. My OCD is driving me nuts. I can't let it stand the way it was yeah 235 that's what it was here we go all right so now we know that the first one has five sides and uh the the sides are uh 340 and then 290 right here uh and six sides and then eight sides and they are uh 235 okay so we have all the information we need now let's make this a program to where if we push the button uh, it knows where it is and it will do it. The first thing that we need to know is when I select D, where is my robot? Well, the great thing about this is that the robot will always be at X equals negative 860 and Y equals negative 179. And so I'm gonna pull this down here and just kind of keep it right there where I can see it. Um, just cheat like that so I can see it. And let me just grab this poly and pull it off to the side right now just to kind of keep it out of the way. And then I'm gonna grab a uh, control block called if. And I'm gonna drag it and drop it right there, if. And then I wanna use location sensing, but I wanna do for location sensing for X and Y. 
Now I could probably get away with um, just X, but I think some of the X values for some of these shapes might be end up being the same. So I, I need to be careful with that. So I'm going to do X and Y to be safe. So I go to sensing and then I'm looking for location sensing and I'm going to use the position of X and the position of Y. Notice I can't fit it in there. That's because this gives me a value and that if is looking for a Boolean, a true or false. And so I want to say under my operators, normally I would use something probably like a greater than or less than for location. But in this, in this instance, I'm going to use an equals because I know it's going to equal exactly the X is going to equal exactly negative 860. But I also need to do, so if, if X equals exactly negative 860, then this would be true. And then it will run whatever's in here, for instance, that. Okay, but I want to actually make it so that it's checking the values of both X and Y. So I'm going to go to my operators again and grab this and, okay? I'm going to pull this guy out and put it right here. I'm going to right click on it and say duplicate and put it, oops, I'm going to put it right here. And I could zoom out. I'm just trying to make sure it's, it's uh, easily viewed in the video. Uh, I'll go ahead and put it in here for right now. Let's do a little cleanup here, pull this over, get it out of the way. And then I'm going to change this to Y. And then Y needs to be negative 179. All right, so just like that, this should run, but we are currently at the Pentagon, so I need to change that to five. 340, okay. So there we go. But the point is, it, it's checking to see if the robot is at that X and Y location. And if it is, then it's running what is there. Uh, now, what happens if I select a different position like E? And if I push play right now, nothing happens. Because it checked and there's nothing to do. Because it, it evaluated this statement and because X was not a negative 860 and Y was not negative 879, and even if one of them was, but the other one wasn't, that statement would result in a false value, which means it would not run that if statement. All right, so then how do I get it to run when it's there? Well, I have a new location value, right? Negative 260 and negative 141. So what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to copy this whole thing, duplicate that whole thing right there. All right. And then I'm going to say when it's at negative 260 and negative 141, I want to do a hexagon. So hex and now I think that one was 290. Oh my goodness. I don't know. 290. And so now I'll push play and now it should run. Yep, and it does. And now if I cl click back and I change it back to D and I push play, it does run. All right, so I don't think I need to do the octagon for you. I think you, you get the point. Basically, I would just uh, copy this whole thing again and just put the values for that in there and then put the values for the octagon. But I'm not going to do that. Um, all right. So that is how you would do the uh, polygons on the Shape Tracer um, Playground. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I am uh, planning on doing a lot more and really trying to get into um, more specifically how these can be applied to uh, cross-curricular lessons, especially in math. And so if you enjoyed this, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel so that you'll be notified of future videos. And uh, if you do like it, if you could give it a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it if you would also uh, share this video with your friends and colleagues. So I really do appreciate it. Again, uh, you watching this far and you have a great day.